And now, from Studio 315, in the luxury towers of Cord Hall, on the historic campus of St. John's Northwestern Academies, it's time for the latest edition of the Lancer News Network, with Jose Baruman Santander, Charles Conklin, Sean Fang, Incia Hader Shaw, Ramon Ponce Franco, and Pedro Ramirez. Entertain, unify, inform. This is LNN. Good morning, Lancers. I'm Charles Conklin. And I'm Pedro Ramirez. And this is LNN. Today is Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. Thanks for joining us. Today, we'll get an update on spring sports and share some wonderful news about our speech and debate team. But first, did you know that this past Monday was Earth Day? Each year, the global celebration of Earth Day is a reminder of the importance of environmental conservation, where people around the world come together to take action for a healthier planet. Whether it's reducing carbon emissions, protecting wildlife habits, or advocating for cleaner energy, the message is clear. Every action counts. One big push this year is to reduce the global use of single-use plastics, such as straws, food containers, and utensils, cups, and plastic bags. Right now, more than half of all plastic produced is designed for single-use purposes, and up to 5 trillion plastic bags are used worldwide each year. As we reflect on Earth Day, let's remember that the choices we make today will shape the world we can leave behind. Together, we can create a sustainable future for all. And now, here's Jose Baruman to tell us a little bit about a new club forming here at SJNA. Good morning, Elena. Here we are with First Sergeant Sutter that will tell us about the new chapter of Dimolay. Can you tell us about what is Dimolay? So, Dimolay is a high school and middle school organization founded by the Curious and Society, which is what our advisor and my father, Mr. Stadler, is a part of. It's an organization that inspires growth with leadership and service through the use of ancient rituals and different events with the surrounding community. Now, can you tell us about how does it work for St. John's? So, with St. John's and Demole, there used to be a chapter way back when Sydney Smythe was in charge, uh, but that kind of died out. So, we're instead of starting a new chapter, we're actually reinstating the old chapter and bringing it back. So what we're going to do is we're working with surrounding other chapters, like in the Brookfield chapter we went to, we're working with them on different activities and organizations, different like events that go on with other chapters of DBA. In many ways, the work of a critic is easy. We risk very little. Los polparentos. All right, at the bro. At the count of three. One, two, three. What's up, brother? Two, three. Enchilado and tira sabor piña con relleno sabor tamarindo. One, two, three. Yes, and you have to eat it. 
Can I call you Rose? Cause you're sweet like Good morning, LNN. I am Ramon Ponce with your latest news update. Today, we bring you our story of exploration and learning as students from Mr. Bennett's U.S. History Honors and 20th Century Honors class embarked on a journey to the nation's capital. A really good experience. We enjoyed a lot visiting museums, monuments, and we learned a lot. Uh, this trip was great. I mean, we went to all sorts of different monuments and museums. We got to learn and explore the history in Europe. So, I think Washington DC trip was really good because we got to see a lot of the monuments around there. We also walked a lot, saw a lot of museums, and I think it was really educational, and I think it was just an awesome experience. Last week, students from Mr. Bennett's classes went out on a mission to discover the rich legacy of American history and culture in Washington, D.C. Throughout the trip, students took on the role of prisoners, sharing knowledge about the significance of each location they visited. From the House of Power at the United States Capitol to the hallowed grounds of the White House and the poignant exhibits at the African American History Museum, students gain a deeper understanding of the diverse narratives that shape America's history. Despite facing some rain, the trip proceeded smoothly, with the students fully immersing themselves in the experience. Now, armed with newfound knowledge and experience, SGNI students return back. My favorite movie is Fast and Furious 1. We may not have a chance, but we have each other. If you want to get where you're going, you gotta fix the past <laughs> or something. <laughs> My favorite movie is Black Adam. My favorite movie is Creed 3. I got it. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is crazy. What to do, y'all? I'm James. Uh, my favorite movie is Baywatch. Yeah, we saw it in the coroners. Coroners. Yeah, we saw it in the cor cor corners. It's not in the corners report. Oh, it was in the corners yes. report. I'm gonna get it. I'm in the corners report. Yes, we saw it in the corners report. <laughs> well, you probably know that Wisconsin is known for cheese and beer, but did you know that some of the most famous serial killers are from here as well? Ed Gein, whose real life crimes inspired movies like Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Silence of the Lambs, is from Plainfield, Wisconsin. Perhaps the most famous. Jeffrey Dahmer, lived right up the road in Milwaukee. Recently, a new murder case has just been filed after a severed leg was found in a pond in a public park in Milwaukee. Here's Insia Heidershaw with the story. I'm Insia Heidershaw for LNN. Recently in Milwaukee, they found a leg of a young woman in Waldemar Park in Cudahy. We found out that the person responsible was Maxwell Anderson. He was arrested on April 4th. Prosecutors believe that Anderson met up with the 19-year-old Robinson for a date, April 1st, then killed and mutilated her. Body parts belong to, or believed to belong to, Robinson have been found at various locations around Milwaukee County after she was reported missing April 2nd. Anderson, 33, is charged with a first-degree intentional homicide, mutilation of a corpse, and arson. His motive still remained unclear. With the season coming to an end, I thought it was time we interviewed the LNN staff and asked them what their favorite parts and what their highlights were of this year. What did you like most about coaching LNN this season? Um, the staff this season 
there's certain things that I didn't have to worry about uh, compared to some previous seasons. Um, they're mostly responsible and creative and they hit the ground running and didn't have to be told all the ideas for every uh, segment. What did you like most about being part of the LNN cast this season? You know, being part of the LNN cast, I was able to like have complete freedom when it comes to making different types of videos, you know, entertainment and news. Uh, I, I just loved editing and it, it was fun. I have classmates and an awesome teacher too. Okay, fine. Odin, dva, tre. Yeah, that's not even how to say it, bro. Okay, what was your favorite segment to work on? My, I think my favorite segment to work on was the shot video, because it was really funny, like recording the guys and then editing the video. I think it was Ellen on the ground because it was fun to see the game community like in their uh, daily lives. Um, the only ones I really did this season were like the Lancer Feud ones, which I really enjoy because it's uh, like a little competition. It's fun. It's lighthearted. It's not serious. And um, the, the personalities I got to actually have on those, I really enjoyed. What segment did you enjoy in working the most? Oh, I loved working on the uh, medium males consume yep, segment, yep. and also uh, for uh, on a future episode, I got some high hopes for that. This is LNN Underground. You still got a little. Mm -hmm. Oh boy! I thought someone walked in. With Families Weekend coming up in just two days, Pedro and I recently went to a restaurant that you and your family could check out. Here we take a look at Zinn, right here in Doubtfield. What's up, Lancers? I'm Charles Conklin. And I'm hungry. And I'm famished. Let's, Let's eat. eat. Zin is an uncommon California Italian restaurant located just outside St. John's. With a rating of 4.5 stars, it is known for its unique and tasty food, cozy atmosphere, and a comfortable eating space. The menu consists of various American Italian dishes, from steak and pasta to chocolate lasagna. All right, what's up guys? Now we got the crispy crab cakes. We're gonna give it a taste. Mm. It's really creamy. That might just be the sauce, but good flavor. This is pretty good. This is, this is good flavor. So I got here some crispy Brussels sprouts with a little bit of meatball. Let's try it out. Brussels sprouts are really crispy. Meatballs are like amazing. They're packed with flavor. It's great. It's amazing. I get it. All right, we got a chicken marsala. I'm gonna cut right in and keep it some veggies, some mashed potatoes. Amazing, wow. That is really good. So I got some uh, fettuccine and meatballs over here. True Italian classic. And I'm gonna try it out. That's what we get a little bit of meatball in it. That. There's basil, super flavorful. The noodles are perfectly cooked. 
and the meatball. Oh my God, the meatball and the sauce. All right, uh, we're reporting right outside uh, Zim, and this is our opinion of it. I'm thinking like a three. Uh, I'm thinking a solid 3.7 actually. This is a great place to go with some friends. This was alright, yeah, this is a good group. It's, it's, it's great, it's alright. It's pretty good. Hi, I'm Sean Fang, and I interviewed the tennis and golf coach for Spring Sports. So you're, in your opinion, how's the season so far? Uh, our record has been a little disappointing. Uh, if you only judge a team by its record, right now we're three and three. Um, but a lot of that is because this year I specifically asked that we start playing bigger schools and stronger competition. The last two seasons, we've only lost one match in two years. This year, we're starting to play these Division One schools that have 12 to 1,500 students. And so we're three and three. We're still, uh, you know, holding our own, but um, our record is not as good as we're used to. So the way a single or the way a tennis team is put together, you have singles players and doubles players. So a match has four singles players and three doubles teams. So there's 10 players and our number one singles right now is Gabriel Gomez. And our number two singles is Adrian Aguirre, uh, both phenomenal uh, tennis players. And our number one doubles is Max Hatch and Victor Valenzuela, a very, very strong doubles team. Um, and we're excited to see how deep they can go into the state tournament. How is your golf season so far, Mr. Gary? Well, the golf season is going just fine. We've competed in two different varsity meets and two different JV meets. Everybody's doing just fine and improving all the time. Our varsity team has been rotating, and so has the JV team, actually. We came out originally with 20 or 21 players, and that's a lot for five-man teams. Mm -hmm. So the roster is definitely not set in stone. So, is your character kind of like a superhero? No. I, all right, all right. Is your character a cartoon character? Uh, I wish. No, no, not at all. Um, is your uh, character <laughs> All right. Is your character a cartoon character? He's he's a cartoon and a live action character. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, mine too. Mine mine is also a live action and a cartoon character. So is your character a superhero? Yes. Okay. Uh is your character Marvel? No. Okay. Is your character DC? No. So that's Marvel. Okay. Is your character um DC? Yes. Okay. Is your character a uh, does he have like superpowers? Yes. Uh, d does your character wear like a special suit? Yes. Uh, does your character is it is he fast? Is he strong? Strong. Okay. Uh, is your character um what colors does your character wear? Red. I was gonna say character. I was gonna say so Oh, uh, is your character the Flash? Yes. Ah, let's go. Hello Lancers. Today we're gonna to be seeing how people react to eating the most sour thing money can buy, citric acid. Let's go, come on. What? And you better close that mouth, you better not open it. <laughs> For cleaning, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, bro. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> That's 
satu. ¿Completa la cucharada? Sí. O poquita. No, entera, entera, entera. Te la tengo que dar bien. La gente, güey. As many may know, St. John's recently participated in an educational trip to Europe. I was on it, and let me tell you, it was great. The trip was open to anybody and took place between March 14th to the 23rd. Since this was a 10-day trip, I'm going to try to fit as much information as possible in one episode. We saw our first place, Marseille. Here we saw an amazing view of southern France and had a little bite, which is actually pretty good. We then went up to Avignon, where we saw this huge castle and even a statue of Jesus. Following Avignon, we went to Pointe du Garde and saw an ancient bridge with cool views. Following this, we went to Nimes and saw a coliseum that used to be used to fight in the ancient ages. After that, we went to Provence, a small town on a mountain, and had some original sausage. It was actually it's really good. We also saw a holding camp from World War II, which obviously was kind of sad, but cool to see, I guess. Next, we saw Tulin, which was a point on the mountain overviewing the Allied landing of Europe. After that, we went to Nice, and then Monaco. Monaco was really beautiful and had amazing views. After that, we went to Chamoin, which was in the Alps, and went on the Louvre while seeing in the incredible view of Alps. Finally, we saw the Chateau Thierry Monument, and then Paris. In Paris, we went up the Eiffel Tower, saw the Notre Dame Cathedral, and ate our last meal on a boat before flying home. This past Friday, April 19th, the SGNA debate team went 3-0 and won the inaugural gold medal in the WISDAA World Schools event in the Wisconsin State Meet in Madison. Captain Marcus Hagen led the way with a 73-point average over the three rounds. Jack Bickers and Carl Swanson also turned in outstanding performances with averages of 72 and 71 points. SGNA's debate team finished the 2023-2024 year with an 8-1 record. Be sure to congratulate our state champions. Well done, Lancers. Well, that's all for today's episode. Join us on May 15th for a special tribute to the class of 2024. Entertain, unify, inform. This is LNN. I'm Charles Conklin. And I'm Pedro Ramirez. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching. We should have started kissing. <laughs>